Martin, that, that leads us nicely to a very complicated area. So here we're talking about uh, radiographic progression or clinical progression on a targeted agent. And along comes our newest agent approved in the clinic, nivolumab, a checkpoint inhibitor. So to set the stage, help us understand the population that was studied, uh, the results from the pivotal trial that was published in the New England Journal, and, and really from your point of view, uh, when do you think it's appropriate to think about using checkpoint inhibitors in, in kidney cancer? And lastly, uh, and I'll ask Nazar and, 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 and Sandy to weigh in, um, we're different than melanoma and different than lung cancer. We may not have a biomarker to help us choose the winner, so to speak. So it's a very complicated area, and as Nazar pointed out, this area of so-called pseudoprogression. So help us synthesize that body of information so that someone that's thinking about a checkpoint inhibitor for their patients can decide when and if to use it and then how to evaluate its benefit. So checkpoint inhibitors, particularly PD-1 and pd one inhibitors, have now been in uh, clinical trials for RCC um, for a few years, but nivolumab, the first approved agent, has really only been uh, on the market with an FDA label for advanced kidney cancer um, since uh, the fall of last year, 2015. And the agent was uh, approved based on the pivotal Checkmate 025 study. As you say, it was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2015. And uh, it was a phase three trial that enrolled patients who had been treated with one or two prior TKI um, VEGF-directed agents. Uh, it randomized patients um, to receive either nivolumab at a dose of three mg per kg every two weeks uh, intravenously, or Everolimus, uh, which based on the record one uh, trial is FDA approved in patients pretreated with one or two prior TKI, so really the best uh, standard of care for comparison on a randomized trial. The primary endpoint for this study, and that was um, very interesting and highly anticipated by the field, was overall survival. So the trial set out to show a median overall survival uh, benefit of nivolumab uh, over Everolimus. And that is something we haven't seen in a while. Um, many of the agents, in fact all agents with the exception of Temsorolimus that are FDA labeled for advanced kidney cancer, were approved based on pivotal trials that showed progression-free survival benefit. And it's been difficult in the past to show overall survival um, due to the fact that patients go on to receive other agents. The reason that overall survival was chosen for nivolumab on the Checkmate 025 study uh, was due to a signal that was seen on the phase two randomized dose finding study, a large trial um, of about 100 patients that received nivolumab at different uh, uh, doses. And looking at the progression-free and overall survival data on that phase two study, uh, median progression-free survival didn't seem to be so striking compared to historical controls, but the median OS signal was quite strong on the phase two trial. Uh, and uh, ultimately motivated the primary endpoint of OS. Um, certainly the mechanism of action, immune induction, with hope for a more lasting effect against uh, cancer biology than uh, um, a tyrosine kinase inhibitor, also motivated that choice of uh, a primary endpoint. The trial was, a, um, was, a, was positive. It did uh, prove um, uh, superior uh, in terms of median overall survival. <clears throat> which was, uh, I believe, um, around 20, oh, uh, help me, uh, 25 months for the uh, nivolumab compared to about 19 months for um, the Everolimus. There are various secondary endpoints that were investigated on the study. Um, Progression-free survival, interestingly, was not different between the two agents. But what's most relevant to me was that um, tolerance was also compared, as was quality of life, patients' reported outcomes. Uh, and all of those favored uh, investigational agents, so nivolumab uh, did have a more favorable toxicity profile, and that's certainly been my experience also uh, in practice compared to the mTOR inhibitor. Um, and uh, quality of life measures were significantly better uh, for um, uh, nivolumab compared to Everolimus. So back to your other question, how do we uh, integrate this data now and how oncologists should choose the agent for the treatment of advanced kidney cancer. So I think it's important to keep in mind that the phase three data that led to the approval of this agent was in a VEGF um, inhibitor pretreated patients. Um, patients uh, that have 
uh, failed treatment with uh, uh, VEGF TKI can be considered for this drug. That's where we have safety data and where we have efficacy data. It's certainly reasonable to consider it as a second or third line agent in patients that reflect the study population of Checkmate 025. My own experience, um, and now I think that's important to investigators, uh, to, or I should say to oncologists that are not used to using these agents on clinical trials, is that nivolumab is a very tolerable agent uh, to give. Um, the largest downside to it is our, you know, our frequent trips to clinic. Patients have to come every two weeks to receive the agent. But any patient who's been pretreated with a TKI or two will tell you that they'll gladly uh, do that for a little bit um, and feel better on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of the toxicity profile. It's important to know about toxicities. I think it's something that the field has to learn about. Uh, these are different toxicities uh, from what we're used to from molecularly targeted agents, and they can be misinterpreted and mismanaged. Um, so all the toxicities that we see with these checkpoint inhibitors, we think are mediated by the immune system, and they can be vague and low grade, like uh, fever or just fatigue. Um, and they can be very organ specific, uh, and uh, it's unusual to see that for uh, nivolumab alone, but they can be high grade and can put a patient uh, into the hospital requiring steroids. Um, on the phase three trial, grade three and four toxicities were um, not infrequent. About 20% of patients treated with nivolumab on the study had treatment emergent events that were grade three or four. Um, in my experience, these, uh, if recognized early and treated well, are very manageable um, toxicities.